Hello everybody. In this video, we're, I'm going to give you some instruction for completing the report uh, for the separation of a mixture lab on LabFlow. We're going to start with the section titled Calculations for the Determination of Ammonium Chloride. And experimentally, what we're doing is we're going to take a dish and we know the mass of that dish. It's called an evaporation dish. It's usually made out of ceramic and it's got a little lip on it here for pouring stuff off because that's often convenient. And, uh, and it's got this round shape to it. And inside of it, we're gonna put our sample. And our sample has ammonium chloride, sodium chloride, and silicone uh, oxide, uh, basically sand. And we're gonna separate it based on the different chemical properties of this mixture and the first one we're going to do what we're going to do is we're going to remove the ammonium chloride and we're going to do that by simply heating it uh, the sodium chloride and the silicon oxide have very very high melting point values they're not going to sublime but the uh, ammonium chloride will sublime so we heat it up real real hot and the ammonium chloride is just going to go straight from a uh, solid into a vapor and it's going to leave the dish and we're not going to collect this back at all but there are some more sophisticated setups that we could do if we wanted to recoup the ammonium chloride and get it back we could and then we're going to weigh this um, dish and the remaining sodium chloride and silicon oxide So let's look at our known variables. We're going to know the mass of this dish, which I've labeled as dish number one, because uh, we're going to bring in another dish and later on in the experiment. We're going to know the mass of the dish and the sample. And then we're going to know the mass at the end uh, of the dish and the sodium chloride and the silicon oxide. And we're going to be asked, what is the mass of the sample? So the mass of the sample is the mass of the dish in the sample minus the mass of the dish. We've done that sort of thing quite a few times so far. Here, we're going to have the mass of the ammonium chloride. And we're going to calculate that as the mass of the dish plus the sample minus the mass of the dish and the sodium chloride and the silicon oxide. Then we're going to be asked to what is the percent ammonium chloride. The percent ammonium chloride is going to be the mass of the ammonium chloride that we calculated right here, divided by the mass of the whole sample times 100%. And that is the fraction of the mass that was ammonium chloride represented as a percent. Now we'll look at the next section in this report titled Calculations for the Determination of Sodium Chloride. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use the solubility difference between sodium chloride and silicon oxide to separate the two. Uh, what's going to happen is that salt readily will uh, dissolve in water, but sand doesn't. So we're going to add some water in. And then we're going to stir that around until all the salt dissolves and the sand is left in there separate. And then we're going to carefully pour off the water, but not the sand, into a different dish that we're going to call dish two. And what we're going to have left in dish one is just going to be wet sand. Now in dish two, we have our salt and water and we want to get rid of the water and we're going to heat that up and boil off all the water. Um, this gets to be pretty dangerous. Before we were heating just solids, but now we got liquids in there and obviously it can start boiling and, you know, shooting out of the thing and stuff. And you don't want that anytime uh, like a drop comes out that's not water vapor you lost a little salt with that too. So we don't want that and it can be dangerous. So one thing that you're gonna do is at the very end, when you're getting real close to the bottom, that's when it's gonna wanna sputter out. Uh, you're gonna put this 
little glass piece on it called a watch glass and it just sits on top it's like a little glass lid for this and you have to be careful because once you put the watch glass on there you could have like a little bit of pressure build up but typically it's just going to kind of roll out the sides and this little lip here helps with that too kind of water vapor can come out of there and so that's going to keep it from sputtering out and it's also going to keep the sodium chloride from like absorbing more water which it could absorb a little bit and kind of mess up our massing at the end and then we're going to mass this dish with the watch glass and the soda and and the uh sodium chloride and the dish here and so to get our mass of the sodium chloride we're going to need to have mass the watch glass before we added it on there so what are our known variables? We know the mass of dish two. We know the mass of the watch glass. We got that. And we know the mass of the dish plus the watch glass plus the salt. We'll be asked for the mass of the salt. This is gonna be the mass of all three minus the mass of the dish minus the mass of the watch glass. And then we're gonna calculate our percent sodium chloride. This is going to be the mass of the sodium chloride divided by the whole mass of the sample, which we calculated in the previous section, times 100%. In the next section, titled Calculations for the Determination of Sand, our silicon oxide, we're going to take this wet silicon oxide, or wet sand, and we're just going to heat it just to dry it off. It's going to drive off some water, and then we're going to go ahead and mass that. We're gonna know the mass of dish one. That's the same value that we used in the first uh, set of section that we talked about. And we're gonna know the mass of the dish in the sand. We'll subtract those to get the mass of the sand. And then we'll calculate our percent silicon oxide. Finally, we're gonna have our summary section here, our known variables are going to be the ones that we've calculated all along. We're going to know the mass of the sample, the mass of the salt, the mass of the silicon oxide, and the mass of the ammonium chloride. Uh, and what we're going to see is that the mass that we originally had for the sample is not going to equal the sum of these masses that we've calculated because we did a bunch of different things and we made a bunch of error, uh, measurements and those measurements had error in them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna define what we call the mass recovered. And that's gonna be the sum of all the masses that we have recovered. These uh, may be higher or lower than the true masses that we should have gotten. And then we're gonna uh, look at the difference between those two. So our, our, the difference in mass between uh, the mass of the sample and the mass that we recovered. You know, by how much are we off uh, what we should be? And we're going to take that to be the absolute value. That's what these vertical lines mean. So that means that we're going to enter into lab flow a positive value. Finally, we're going to calculate the percent recovery. And that's going to be the mass of what was recovered divided by the mass of sample. And we shouldn't forget we need to go ahead and multiply that by 100% as well to make sure that we're getting a percentage.